Whoa, Professor Vern, should I even ask what that is? Ah, good morning, Administrator. As you know, in very cold weather, we have problems with mechanisms freezing up. So I'm developing this hand laser that can heat materials instantly. Oh, that's so cool, but watch where you're pointing that thing. Oh, absolutely, Administrator. It should have completely vaporized the liquid. I guess I have it set too low. Anyway, how can I help you today, Administrator? I'm going to move this out of the way. Well, Professor Vern, I so enjoyed our discussion on traffic signals. I was hoping you could help me understand how railway signals work. Sure, Administrator. I'd be glad to explain. The purpose of railway signaling is to prevent collisions. Railroads commonly use red and green colored signals, uh, similar to traffic lights, to inform the train operator that they have permission or authority to move the train. Hmm. That sounds logical, Professor Vern, but how is it done? Most railways use track circuits to electrically sense that a train is present in the block. I have a mock-up to demonstrate the principle. Another Professor Vern mock-up? Let's check it out. Absolutely. What we have here is a basic railway with two blocks and a colored signal located at the entrance of block two. Now, the two blocks are mechanically joined but electrically separate. Now, this is done by what's called an insulated joint or iJet. That's quite a cool vintage model of our light rail vehicle, Professor Vern. Ah, yes it is, Administrator. Now, our model also has a track circuit and it consists of a battery, a relay, and they are connected to the track rails. Professor Vern, what is a relay? Ah, sharp question, Administrator. A relay is an electric switch. When battery voltage is applied to the relay, it has a coil that energizes, and this illuminates the green signal as we see here. Now, if I short out the battery voltage using a wheel set, then the track circuit will drop out and the signal will go red. I get it, Professor Vern. When the train moves into block two, its signal will turn red. Administrator, it's not as simple as it looks. Let me explain. Well, sorry, Professor Vern. Sometimes I try to solve the puzzle too soon. Ah, well, just by coincidence, you happen to be right this time. When the light rail vehicle moves into block two, its metal wheels and axle will short out the track circuit, making the signal go red. What we have here is that a green and red signal is used to grant or deny movement into block two. And the signal color, also called an aspect, is controlled by a track circuit. This is known as automatic block signaling, or ABS. I will demonstrate. Professor Vern. So our model scale signal system is ensuring that only one train can enter block two, ensuring there are no collisions. Exactly, Administrator. You got it right this time. What do you mean this time? Now, imagine an entire railway divided into blocks with a red and green signal governing entrance into each block. Now you can imagine how trains are protected against collisions. Now I want to show you what a real track circuit relay looks like. Wow, that looks gigantic compared to our scale model relay. Absolutely, Administrator. That's a precision mechanism, and it gets calibrated by an electronic technician, and it's also called a vital relay. Awesome, but why is it called a vital relay? Administrator, you always ask such focused questions. I assume you've gone to executive seminars to develop that skill. Actually, my children have taught me the art of endless questioning. Ah, yes. Well, anyway, railway signaling systems are designed with vital parts in that they fail safe. You see, if the smallest vital part breaks, then the signals display the most restrictive aspect, essentially stopping train movement. Therefore, safety is the most important feature of railway signaling systems. Professor Vern, I can't thank you enough for explaining to me how railway signaling works. My pleasure, Administrator. Mmm, my coffee got cold. Oh, let me take care of that, Administrator. Whoa! Professor Vern, what happened to my coffee? Oh, I must have had it set too high. Oh well, uh, you know what they say, too much coffee is no good. I should have known that would happen. <laughs>